welcome to the stream. We're here. Thursday, it's Friday Eve. Not for me. It's Friday Eve. And we're gonna slip ourselves into the comfy sheets of Gaxmore. That's what we're gonna do. That's what's on the screen right now. There. Gaxmore. I'm gonna get my trusty glove of smiting. And I'm gonna try and figure it out on camera. Because I always seem to forget to actually do it off camera. But it'll get better. She's getting better. She's getting faster. Swah. We're off. Three times out of three. If I try to do that, like, like if I did it again right now, it would it'll be gone. And um, stream's over because I lost my pen. But let me do us do a check. We've got our mic is picking up nicely. Music seems to be getting picked up. Earlier this week when they did a um, Windows update, it kind of reset everything inside my stream. It was kind of weird, but I think it's because it was like, mic, no. Yes, your headphones, no. Anything to do with like the stream that was plugged into it, Microsoft went, no. But that's not why we're here. We're not going to talk about the nasty Microsoft. We're going to talk about Gaxmore. And let's, let's, talk, let's overview our stream. This is going to be a two-hour stream, maybe a little bit less. Um, we're going to be ending around 8 o'clock Pacific time. Maybe a little shy of that, but that's what we're shooting for. We are drawing the city of Gaxmore. And we had, last night, completed our cemetery area. I think it came out looking pretty good. And up here, in the middle of the screen, is it's described as ruined huts. Ruined actual shacks. Most of which were like gone, but there were some partial structures. So what we started to do, this is a proof of concept, was like this ruined area, and they're littered all over. They're, they're outside, they're filling this area, right? So we're going to do a lot of that. Uh, there was the wandering, the wandering travelers rest or something. Right, anyway, it's there. I don't have the story up in front of me. And... We had a ruined inn just down the road with a visible staircase on the north side. So I thought it'd be fun to draw that staircase poking out from under the ruined roof. So that's what we did last night. Objective today. Huts. We're going to draw ruined huts. We're going to kind of complete this section, I think. And then we'll kind of start heading uh, that way. Because there's little encountered locations up here and we'll start coming up to this location. That's the plan, man. So let's just jump into it. Alright, what have we got? We got eight. Alright, let's let's do this thing. And I want most of them to be ruined, so I'm gonna give you a sneak peek. See how on the old map it, they, they basically were just like there. They're just there, right? I don't wanna do that. I wanna actually do more like well A, not everything's on a 45, 90 degree angle, but also th this type of concept here. Now it was requested that perhaps, before we get into this, let's move him, that's my layers, let's bring my history down here, because you guys probably don't care about history. This we can get rid of, and because someone wanted to see the layers more, so is that going to do it? Oh, no, that's not going to do it. Hold on a sec. Oh, you see? There we go. Let's let's put our layers. Oh, you, it's this, isn't it? Alright, let's get rid of this. Alright, let's... Let's just take a moment to do this. It was by request, so... You know what is this? I don't, I don't like this. Let's get rid of that. I think it was trying to dock to it, you know? There. Alright, hopefully you'll be able to actually see, just see the layers a little bit more. That was basically the request. And you, we're going to get rid of you because we're not doing text right now. Alright, so 
Hopefully, tell me if that's better. You know, because then the glass is actually just sitting over the history, which you probably don't care about, but you can see how, how I'm, like, skipping through the layers. Mr. Valor? I curtsy to you, sir. Angel! You guys are arriving all right at the beginning. This is awesome. New keyboard is here and set up. How does it feel? Is it feeling good? Thank you very much. Good to see you gentlemen and ladies tonight. Ooh, ooh, we're going in with the good stoofs. Oh indeed. Cheers everyone. Happy Friday Eve. You expected it to be quieter. Yeah, mine's noisy. You you've heard mine, right? Mine's noisy as hell. Um but they're so precise, I've fallen in love with it. But they're noisy. But you get used to it. I love the palm rest. It's like the comfiest palm rest I've ever encountered on any keyboard. It's like every keyboard is just like, um, uh, uh, like, like, like some kind of spoof or, or something, right? It's like, they, they, it's because it's meant to be there. This one is the first time I've had a keyboard where it's like, oh no, this is a palm rest. I love the palm rest. My biggest criticism, actually, in my keyboard is it's all lit up except for those secondary um, symbols, like, you know, the asterisk, the minus, the equals. So if, if it's a little bit dark, you've got to remember what key it's on. And it, it still throws me, even now. That's my only real criticism. Angel basically everyone got a nice new mechanical keyboard and it arrived today and she's she seems happy with it. Gonna be a lot of this today, folks. Gonna be a lot of this. So occasionally I will, I promise you, zoom out. I will. Oh, the backlighting and the, 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 the fact that it... And you can turn that off, right? You can change how it behaves. I love it, though. I just leave it on. I just let it just change its colours. It's beautiful. And the, the, you know, like when you come out in the morning and it's just... Oh, and your keyboard's there all lit up just glowing to you. Go, Good morning, Angel. How are you? It's like, oh, keyboard, talk to me. And that's great. Miss J's here. Hello, Miss J. Oh, Jesus, Angel, Miss G's just walked in and you just punched her. You wasted no time. You know that uh, Miss G doesn't duel too much. You, uh, you are violent, Angel. You are violent. Miss G may not even have the coins to accept that duel. Whoa, okay. Miss J threw down. Miss J got it. Miss J, you get 20 gold. Good job of the win. Angel, you can't ask for that. The woman just woke up. She's literally, oh, morning, everyone. And you're just like, oh, Superman punch. I'll probably do a little bit of a ruined garden there. 
How is everyone doing on this wonderful, wonderful Friday Eve? And it is Friday for Miss J right now. We're going to catch up with you, Miss J. I, I like that you're on a different time zone, Miss J, because, you know, when the end of the world comes, you can basically tell us in advance if it's legit or not. Miss J, what have you been up to? Do you have a project you can share with us? Or I'm doing roof detail. I shouldn't be doing roof detail. Miss J will tell me off. Unless it starts on our side of the world. In which case, for Miss J, the world will end and we would die yesterday. we get onto these topics how how now what I love about doing a roof like this like a broken roof is actually drawing the little beams underneath it I don't know why it gives me such satisfaction doing that it's just drawing the little pieces of wood poking out from underneath Now we're going to make these paths all overgrown and everything. I just, I'm putting them there because I don't want it to be like this, where it's kind of like, um, I don't know, it's kind of a little bit lifeless. Not to look, not like the previous map at all, right? It, they look like symbols. I don't want this to look like symbols. I want this to look like something that people have actually um, lived here. And now it's kind of ruined. This is kind of how I think we're going to fill this area. That's my plan. City map, I'll need to check in, see how that's going. Angel, I got this, um, I don't know what you're thinking about. I got this Logitech. Uh, it's a Logitech something. I don't know. But I've actually been really liking it. I'm quite fussy with my mice. I've had bad luck with my mice, and I've been, I've been digging this one. Mystery says, yesterday was a null day drawing. The computer froze Photoshop twice and kept losing 10 to 15 minutes at work. I walked off in a pout. I did some reading for the rest of the day. Well, I think I'm going to hit save now you've actually said that. How far did these come down? Pretty far. Pretty far. All right. You know, let's do, let's do a little kind of... Kind of community here, right? Now long gone. Right, let's zoom in a little bit more. what I think I want to do. Mm, let's not do it there. Let's not shoot our bolt too soon here. Let, let's do it here. Let's 
Let's do a little collapsed chimney. Yeah, I don't know, Angel. Maybe. The G602. G602. It was like black on black. Blacker. So, yeah. G602. That's what I went with. I wanted a wireless mouse that was responsive, that had options for, like, key bindings, etc. Uh, without being over the, the top. Super responsive scroll wheel with long battery life. It had to have good long battery life. And this has been killer so far. I've loved it. I don't know why I replaced my mouse just when I started streaming as well, but it, it's like I was just replacing everything. See, I remembered. I didn't do my roof details. Joy's here? Is Joy here? Is Joy here? Joy's here. Hey, Joy, you're right in between uh, Angel's talking. Hi. And King Bashman is here. Oh, King Bashman, my friend. Happy Friday Eve to you, sir. And congratulations on the Kickstarter uh, being approved. You're launching it on Wednesday? Is that what you're doing? Don't be shy. Let me, if you want to post the link... Please feel free to post the link. We're all friends here. I'm not sure. It, it, it's a, can you post a link to a Kickstarter that's not like... Yeah, that, 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 that. Yeah, live. If you can, please do. I want to, um, I want to join, Let, let's, let's actually bring up my narrate layer here, uh, wow, I narrated the shit out of that, hold on a sec, well, a little bit great, great on that, alright, so my plan is to, like, take these in fact, hold on a minute. Dungeon Tomb likes it when I actually do red here. To take these ruined buildings, right, and bring them close enough to the cemetery where they don't feel like isolated items, right? And I think this, I think this might be close enough, but I, I kind of want to do something similar here. I want to fill this void at a little village that's now ruined. And we're going to do something similar here too. But unlike the previous map. In fact, no, I guess the previous map did it. Did do it. We're going to bring them up here. We're going to bring them up here. We're going to bring them up onto the hills. Just like the previous map did, apparently. And so, like, this east side of the city is going to be this... Really, is, I guess, like, it's old village. It's now just, like, psh, like this outskirts, right? Now destroyed. And so I want to make sure that I... I'm not too far from the walls. I'm not too far from the other structures. The, these buildings are going to anchor everything together. Tuesday evening at some point. Right on. Everyone, two King Games. Look them up. Kickstarter. Next, I guess, Wednesday. Right after they launch. Congrats again on that one. I 
Let's leave the roof detail off for now. The east side of Gaxmore, says Angel, could easily be used separate from the rest of Gaxmore. I think there's a few locations in Gaxmore where that's the case, you know. I'm actually intrigued by Gaxmore. I did not know anything about Gaxmore before joining. We're gonna we're gonna learn about this one on our own. It feels like a great you know when I was doing and we're gonna get back to it by the way, um Keystone we forged and we were talking about what a great location it would be just to add scenarios and like, make it an adventure setting like Tollis uh Tollis. I get the impression that Gaxmore is a little bit like that, but it's a city that has, I think, been under siege and destroyed, and there's definitely undead here. Why the players are here, I actually don't know. But I'm very intrigued by the, by the, the setting, by the location. Angel likes the feel of this section. I love mapping with you. I really do. I don't know what I used to do before. I'd sit here and say, but I used to listen to an audio book. My audio book consumption has certainly gone down quite considerably. But it's been replaced by something better, so it's all good. Tonight I found out what yeet meant. I looked it up. So you can expect me to use that a lot more in the stream now. Yeet. It's by copying the cool kids that you can be cool too. Also known as peer pressure. We're probably going to end up with a lot more buildings than the original, but I think it'll be okay. I think it'll be okay. And right now we're averaging between 30, 60 feet top, so I think that's about right for a shack. Angel audiobooks, if you've got an opportunity to kind of just chill, like I used to, I listen to audiobooks when I paint. Like, you can actually get a lot of reading done. I've gone through a lot of books that way. I love it. Especially, um, like, I actually listened to some H.P. Lovecraft books recently. But, um, like, I listened to a lot of history books. And it's probably, if you've got a good, like, guide, like, speaking, I, I, I do Audible. So they're typically really good. It's great. Just someone sitting there reading you the book of Caligula. Awesome. What I paint. It's like you get two things done at the same time. LibriVox, lots of free books. I did do a lot of free books when I first got into it, testing it out. I did a lot of free books. Uh, I actually, and I know I'm not mapping right now, I'll get back into it in a second. Um, I got a lot of um, old diaries and stuff, like from guys that were in World War One, and even the guy that was in the first tank um, unit ever while I was still trying to figure that shit out. There's a diary, or a guy that went to Gallipoli, it was his diary. It was so Good. Oh my god, it was like a time machine. That hooked me. That hooked me immediately. Um Are any of you Garen Wolf on Twitter? asks Mr. Valor. Garen Wolf. If you are, show your hands or something. I'm not a huge reader either, because it's a huge investment in time. I have a thousand books, but I never the time to read them. Audio? Changed all of that. Edge Marion. Hi, Edge. 
Uh, listen to Civil War 1812, American citizens, British subjects, Irish rebels and Indian allies. It's pretty interesting if you're into American English history. I went through a lot, a lot, a lot of history books. I'm still kind of doing them. Like, it was, it was great. It's like, you know what? I don't know enough about the English Civil War. Got some audio books on it. Listen to, like, King Edward and God knows what else. I'm like, I don't know enough about even European history. Medieval. I should get it. I don't know enough about the Crusades. It was brilliant. I, I crammed so much reading in when I was driving to work or painting, like I said, or mapping. It was awesome. But yes, a physical book is a beautiful thing. But let me give you an example. I own the book, or a book, but I, uh, about Caligula. I've had it for probably a couple of years now. And I've had it like next to my bed. I've, had, I've read maybe this much of it. I've got it out here in the living room. Never seem to find the time to actually read it because I'm drawing instead. So I got the audiobook. Now, I love holding that physical book, but the audiobook actually got it down into me, so it's all good. For me, like, and not everyone's born equal, like, born equal? I don't know where I was going with that. Not everyone has a equal sort of lives, right? For me, time. I don't have time. Nowhere near enough time. I've been blessed with a, you know, a job that gives me a little bit of money. But it takes time. And then when I, like, you know, have PC games that I love to play. That's my vice. And... You know, they take a little bit of time, and I want to read. That takes time. I want to paint miniatures. I want to paint so much more. That takes time. But I also want to do this. This takes a lot of time. So I am, like, continually, critically short on time. That That's my main thing. So being able to have, like, an audiobook and get that knowledge. Just get... I love, I love information. I just... Just give it to me. Just tell me the story of Caligula. Tell me, start through finish, you know. Tell me about the emperors of Rome. And I'm just, mm, while I'm doing something else, it's great. It's like a skill chip from Shadowrun. I can download knowledge. I'd have to look through my collection, Angel. But that's typically one subject matter that's actually uh, not well represented in my um, library, I will admit. I mean, you all know me at this point. I'm nuts about ancient Rome, right? And outside of ancient Rome, the Napoleonic era. So, 80% of the books I own, uh, audio or otherwise, are on those two subjects. And I, I'm not sure how much I've actually tipped my toe into anything in the Eastern world. Which probably says nothing, I suppose. There you go. It'll take a little bit of time. 
But that's what we do with these maps, right? You joy, you are awesome. You are awesome. I don't get to hear that one more much. See, that's the loud. I love that soundbite. I love that soundbite. That rocks. I have not heard that soundbite in a long time. That's fantastic. Thank you. That's much appreciated. Now, Mesoamerican, I, I did do a little bit of that. I did do a little bit of that. But I actually have a few bucks on that. Um, there are two. Joy, you rock. Bit of, bit of ground splatter. Let's just start going down away. I tend to be the type of person that, you know, if it, if it dawns on me that I have a hole in my knowledge regarding history, I typically try to address it. I'm not like, you know, a history, like, aficionado or anything. I'm not. But I, I, I am very passionate about history. I, I feel like we should be, as human beings, know where we came from, the people and the stories and the events that have come before us and learn from it, try to grow from it. At least appreciate those events, uh, or even be appalled by those events. Um, and I, I just lap that shit up so much. It was, um, it was that sort of mentality where I realised that, um, while I love Rome ancient Rome a lot I actually didn't know too much about the true story of the individual emperors like you know birth through end individually and I'm, I'm currently like attempting to rectify that right now I think uh, doing that it, you can like avoid some of the uh False stories that tend to circulate, you know, or two around them. Angel says, as I'm getting older, I find it hard to retain knowledge. I do worry that I'll get Alzheimer's. You won't. Mm -mm. You stay creative. You stay creative. It fights that. R reading, writing, getting creative. It exercises the brain. I, I, I honestly, so here's the deal. Here's the deal, Angel. I'll be honest with you. I can't remember for shit half the stuff in the books that I read. I can't, and I, I want to. I find myself reading dates over and over and over, or the number of troops at a battle over and over and over, or the, a general's name over and over and over, and I forget. I forget almost every time. It's very hard for me to get shit in my brain, you know? It's like, if I write it down, it goes in easier, but if I'm reading it, it doesn't. It's just, it's part of it. I mean, I know that there's an age thing too, but I'll almost guarantee that it might just be where your brain works. Maybe if you write it down, it goes in a little bit better, but when you're reading, that's not what you're doing. At the end of the day, though, you know, just, just read it. It's like, I've read all of the Sharp books, Napoleonic era fiction. Do I remember, like, 
most of the character names? No. I remember some of them. Do I remember all of the stories? No. I've read them like a year ago. That just means we can read them again, Angel. You know, I'm going to turn my scale ball off real quick, just so we can um, keep a clear eye on what we're doing here. I don't think this is too dense. Is it too dense? I might space them out a little bit. I might space them out a little bit. I kind of want to add a pond. I think I might add a pond. Angel says, about three months ago, I started keeping a, um, a chronicle of my days. What I do and when I do it. That way, when I look back on it, I can have a clue what happened and when it happened. Miss J, took a, took a bit to sort. I've updated work in progress on the map. Miss J, I'm going to share if that is okay with you. Is it my net or is the stream a little laggy? Yeah, it... it Seems okay at my end, and I'm not doing anything else with the bark, so... Shouldn't be anything I'm doing. This is Miss J's work, by the way, everyone. Instagram, Miss J Maps. Look at this. Look at this. Look how gorgeous her stuff is right here. Miss J, lovely, lovely work. You and I really need to do some collaboration stuff. We really do. I gotta be honest with you though, Gil. I gotta be honest with you. I mean, I love your colouring. Your colouring is you. 100%. But I look at those bluffs, and I'm like... Or, or even... That, look at that road. Look at that road. I look at that, and I go, holy shit, that looks like something I did. I lo And I love it. I love it so much. And I love the green around the rocks. That... Ro that rocks. It's kind of freaky looking at this. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah, Hotel Whiffy's a crap, Joy. Oh, that's nice, girl. Good job. Oh, good job. And you've even got stuff in the boat there. Oh. Oh, you and I are twins. Even the little bridges between the buildings right there. Good job. Good job. Seriously, I, I like your battlements too. I love that I love that rocky bluff. I love Oh, you've got a little ship with cargo on it, and there's you've got a little rope going to the sail. Nice touch. Nice touch. Really good work. Really good work. I love it. It's so eerie in some ways, because I, I, I look at it and I go, holy shit, like that bridge right there. I, I adore it. I adore it. That's fantastic. That is seriously fantastic. I actually referred you to someone um, today. They were like, hey, I actually recommended you to someone. Maybe I should have asked if you go, uh, you've got availability. I was like, nope. But talk to Miss J. I don't know if they'll contact you, but it was really good, right? Miss J, fantastic, fantastic. Oh, seriously, I love it. I love. I don't want to say. I, I feel bad in a way saying I love how you are emulating some of my drawing styles, but I don't know how to take that in a way. I don't know. I don't know if that sounds good, but I'm. I'm flattered in a way. And I'm actually really seriously impressed, too, because you've done it so well. I'm, like, blown away by it. It's like I look at, I look at so much that you've done, I'm going, that's my hand. It's like you learned to forge my signature or something. I'm like, holy shit. I don't remember drawing this. It, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Excellent job. Excellent job. I'm very, very, very impressed. I'm very flattered. 
But at the same time, I gotta give you full props. That's a gorgeous map that's taking shape right there. Like, seriously gorgeous. I bet you're putting some serious time on that, huh? You know, you gotta be careful, girl, because... I could kind of bury you in maps. If you're, if you're gonna draw like that, I could be, okay, I know, I know who I can give this to. I'll be saying yes to every project. I turn away so much work. I'm actually, um, I think, you know what I'm really, really, really impressed about, Miss J, is that you've managed to learn a style. I think, I think that's it. You know, that shows incredible talent, I think. Not that you're drawing like me, I'm not saying that my style is that good, but that you learned to do that. That's, that's something. You know, it's, it's savant, like, it's like, here. It is a map. Draw like that. Okay. It's brilliant. Uh, Joy. Um, my brushes. I'm sure Miss J is different. My brushes are m my default ones. The hard. I mean, the deep. Mine are default to a large degree. Hard. Uh, I use the hard round a lot if I'm doing a stab stab from one point to another. Hard round pen pressure size is a big one for me. When I'm doing shadows, I tend to go to soft rounds. One of my favourites is Kyle's Drawing Box Happy HB. I use that one a lot when I'm colouring. A lot when I'm colouring. And I know that these other ones, like Pencil Hard and that type of stuff, um, like the Kyle's brushes in general are really good. I don't use them for drawing purposes, but they were designed for drawing purposes. I tend to use them for colouring purposes. Then, then I've got a lot of bushes like these, like, bushes and stuff like that that I use. But for drawing, just the basic hard round pen pressure size. Mystery is more nuanced than me. Angel, I look forward to seeing it. Angel's gonna twitch her maps, right on. I think um I think I mean, there is a cartographer's guild, right? But we've gotta we've gotta do some kind of like Twitch guild type of deal. Twitch cartographers. I guess we're special. So when I was doing ink on paper, this dot style, this, this is the thing I did. 
I did dots for shadows, dots for rocks. There's something very therapeutic to just doing little dots and building them up. Mr. Valor. I'm in Alyssa. Pretty sure you're not, but maybe you are. Oh, are you in my mind? All right, but Mr. Valor, um, I'm uh, in Alyssa. You have me wanting to start working on regional world mapping. Honestly, the fact that we're all coming together and all kind of getting pumped about maps and so many people are like, I, I like taking up mapping and drawing and they're kind of I, isn't that wonderful isn't that kick ass I'm all about that take it up man get on it twitch geographers twitch geographers I like it I wonder if you could do groups like that on twitch that'd be kind of cool if you could Mr. Valor, all my commercial stuff has been battle maps, but I might start expanding out. Do it! Honestly, you know if you shared it on the stream, we'd all look at it. If you wanted critique or feedback or anything, we'd give it. If you wanted, like, what we thought you could do next with a piece, you know we'd do it. I know you weren't hitting on me. You were just in me. If you know what I mean. That's so dirty. That, that, now, now, now the channel's banned. That's it, we're done. Yeah, Angel, you're right. There, there is there is passion here. We're, we're passionate. We're, we're having fun with it, right? We're having fun with it. And that's everything. That is everything. Honestly, so uh, I've got a... I've got a, I've got a good friend, Ian. Um, and he's doing some pretty nice maps recently. And occasionally he asks me, Hey, how would you draw this? How would you draw that? What do you think of this? And I love just talking maps, right? So I'm, I'm going to talk to him. I think I would do it this way. And I just love seeing him grow as a mapper and get more confident, you know? I don't care what you do. Just draw a map. Just draw it. Some of my maps are shit. Some of my maps are mega shit. Doesn't matter. Just draw. Just bloody draw. It's cool. King Bassman, streaming on one monitor, working on the other. That's how you do it. That's why you have two or three monitors. Well, Mr. Valor's got some work to share. Let's let's take a look at Mr. Valor's work. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, battle map. Yep. Nice. Forest roads. Good deal. Good deal. Oh, Valor Maps. Patreon.com. Valor Maps, folks. Nice, good job. You're on Deviant too. Are these... They're not pro-fantasy trees. you got different types of trees there. I, I think some of them look pro-fantasy-like. But they're nice trees. I love that path, man. That's a lovely path. Great. That's awesome. I was running a um, D and D game like four years ago, five years ago, and I actually got into the habit of printing entire encounters out, not like dry erase, printing the whole thing out. It's so fucking costly; it's ridiculous. That's the type of thing I would print out. That's pretty cool. I would put miniatures on that table. I'm very happy with the result. Very nice job. Very nice job. I would be proud to have that on the table as a GM. You made the trees with Photoshop. Damn nice work. Those are good trees. I want your trees. Those are great trees. I want your trees in my collection.
Yeah, if someone is gonna like like duel Mr. Valor or something, you might want to explain to Mr. Valor how it works, because I don't think he knows. It's an active combo. It's an active combo, that's for sure. But that's good, right? That's good. Mr. Valor, nice man. Seriously. I love it. There's always room for a good battle now. I, I look forward to seeing what you come up with next, especially if you start branching out to other styles. Another subject matters, as it were. Keep sharing it. Keep sharing it. And I, I, I'm serious when I say I want your trees. I'm a sucker for a good tree. Or a bush on a map. And I've got quite a few. But having more in my collection? Ah! Don't mind if I do. I just love, just love the, the the mapping subject matter, you know. It's so it's so cool. I mean, I love traditional art too, very passionately, but maps make me go, ooh. You know, it's different. Tom Carter's Tom Carter's welcome. Tom Carter's is here sharing something. Let's take a look. Look what this stream has become. We're sharing maps. This is awesome. Ooh, Tom. Nice, man. Nice, nice. Yeah, that's... I love the colours. I love how clean it is. It's a lovely style. That's a lovely style, Tom. Yeah, nice. I love your frame, too. Your frame's really good. It's the silly little details, right? I love your frame. But yeah, that's good. See, any map that you find yourself looking through going, Ooh, what's here? Ooh, what's this? Ooh, what's this? Any map that you do that is a win. Is a win. That, I like... I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what's going on here. So I'm going to get rid of that. Um, any... I love your palette. I love the colour palette of that one. That's that's really beautiful, Tom. Yeah. I, I love I love how it, it's a subdued palette. You know, you've got all of that vibrancy of colour in there. But it's not oversaturated. It's really... You've, you've hit the note just right. I struggle with that. I tend to oversaturate if I'm not careful. That's good. Sometimes, though, Tom, like, I think we all agree, sometimes you can overdo something. You know, not every square inch needs something in it. I feel like, to a degree, I'm doing that over here, which is why I've walked away from it. I'm trying to spread out a little bit. No, the, the map had good balance. It was it was a good map. It was nice. You are all so talented. You are all so good at what you do. It's like, I don't even know. I don't even know where to begin.
Angel, I just noticed your green screen background. Nice and creepy. I'm doing creepy, you know. So, we're coming up to my Call of Cthulhu Saturday. And, and it needs a little bit of creep, you know. So, yeah, we've got a Call of Cthulhu going on. Well, actually, this is like a whole bunch of sailors looking out at sea, right? i got some really good ones to do. I, th I think I think in the days leading up to my Call of Cthulhu Saturday, we're gonna we we I kind of start getting thematic, you know. And it's not thematic with the map; it's thematic with the game I'm about to play. Yeah, King, seriously, dude. The the I, what I love about how this channel is shaping up is there's a lot of really talented people here. Like, I love it so much. Like, they do really good work. Make notes. Make notes. Because when, like, someone contacted me today about, like, so do you recommend anyone? I was throwing out, like, the names of some people I know in the channel here. So, yeah. That little black book. Everything you just saw, right, is totally... Top notch. Alright. Let's fill in this area. Gas light docks, yes. Yes, it actually is from a Cthul uh, Call of Cthulhu computer game. I forget what the game was actually called now. It's not the Sunken City. Um... It was called something else. I'm not going to look it up right now. Um, I love Call of Cthulhu. I adore the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game so much. Um, the computer game or most games are a miss. And this was one of them. It was okay. I haven't finished it yet. Very railroady. Like, you know, here's a location. You, you can scout around in it, but there's only this thing you can do. And then you have to go over here. But if you go over here, you get captured. So you've got to go over here. Then you get out there. Every location was like that. It was a little bit... It was, it was railroad. It was railroad. But pretty, pretty, pretty scenes. Very atmospheric scenes. So you play it for that reason, I suppose. Am I on the right layer? No, I am not. Let's get rid of that. What do you love about the basic role-playing system? Is that what you're calling Call of Cthulhu? Basic role-playing? I've never heard of it called basic role-playing before. Is that is that like a thing? That probably captures roof details, doesn't it? Sorry. And for me, it's not the system, but right? what I love about Call of Cthulhu is the setting, the horror, the fragility of the players, um, but they can survive. The inevitable slide towards insanity, the, the, the creeping horror factor, the props. I die for props. I lo and the pace, the pace of the game, it, it starts off as a mystery. You go into investigation, which hopefully prepares you for the conclusion. I love that. It's so, it's so different. It's so different. Because you take something like, you know, Dungeons and Dragons, any edition, and it's all about, you're given a mission, go and kill something, right? And everything you kill, it gives you XP. Uh, now, I know that Pathfinder 2nd E and, like, um... 5e they're pulling away from that a little bit right but they pulled away from it a lot but my point being is it, there's still those arcs those story arcs i love call of cthulhu there is a mystery and this I, i'll come back to it there is a mystery now you've got to investigate it and that's a different pace right there you're not killing people you're investigating you're getting clues you're interpreting it watching my players around the table like Looking through newspapers, reading articles, and going, oh, wait, 
Wasn't he here? Well, how could he be? And, like, piecing the shit together for who they need to talk to next. And then eventually piecing together what's happening. And then going, we need to go there to the haunted house. You know? And then they could tool up and shit. And, like... But even then, even then, it's like, no, you got to know what you're going against. Because you could have five sticks of dynamite and a couple of shotguns. But if you're going against a shock off, you're probably going to get your face socked off. So you don't want to be doing that. And I love that. It, you have to play smart. But what I really love about the system in and of itself is it's a story. It's not about... I, I've gone entire sessions with, without rolling any dice. And yet there's been a lot of mechanics in there because it, 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 it and that it's honestly it sucked two people that don't role play into my games because they've just listened to the game they've listened to it and gone oh this story is incredible they're not talking about mechanics they're not talking about how you wrestle someone they're not talking about and then you rolled a 20 and then you rolled eight damage no that's not what it's about it never is what that's about in a call of cthulhu game it's all about holy shit this story Oh, that twist. That I love. That I love. It's like, you want to climb down the drain pipe? Sure. What, what, what's your climb? 35? Yeah, you do it. No worries. Don't worry about it. It's like, or in a combat, it's like, okay, so what do you do? How, tell me how it goes. Tell me. There's no rounds. Well, there kind of is. There's rounds, but there's no duration. There's no scale. It just is. Tell a story. Set the scene. As a narrative dungeon master, which is what I am, it's heaven. That's what I like. I can just set a scene. My players go. I ah. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not even drawing right now. That that's what I love. Now that's not basic system. That's what I love about the setting. Exactly, Andrew. You get it right. It's social role playing. Not tactical. I have all. I have so many miniatures for the game. Never broke out one. Never broke out one. And in a way, I don't want to. Even though I love my miniatures, because now it becomes tactical, and it's not meant to be tactical. It's like so. There's two rule systems. There's two rule systems that break the. Um, I'm going to call it D and D mold. D and D is about, and has always been at its heart, even though it's been change now the encounter has to be, be beaten to get xp in other words everything you meet has to be beaten in order for me to power level up shadowman and call of cthulhu change that now they're two very different systems but they do it by showing the players or introducing to the players there is failure you can lose but you don't need to defeat this to get XP out of it. You don't need to do that. that. That's one thing I love about out of the system, right? It's like you can win by not killing it. Um, just surviving could be a win. Like one of my uh, biggest successes, one of my players' best choices I ever did was not lifting the concrete plug off the floor to see what was underneath. That was a decision that probably saved a lot of lives. And you don't get that in D&D. In D&D, if you've got a concrete plug on the floor, someone's going to lift it. And the only time I've ever seen that not happen is in Shadow One and definitely Call of Cthulhu. Players are just, they play different. They play almost like it's real life. I love that. Theatre of the mind. Theatre of the mind. Exactly. And I know, I know, folks, you came here for mapping and I'm, like, ranting about my favourite system. But that's what I love about it. That's what I love about it, Angel. And I will tell you about my story in Call of Cthulhu once the players have finished the current chapter that they're on. Because they're making some decisions, they're doing some things. There's causes and effect. And I don't want to spoil it for them, so I can't talk about it right now. But I will... Once they're finished with this chapter. This chapter is in England. Then I can tell you all about England.
And by the way, I don't mean any of that as a some anti Dungeons and Dragons or anything. I grew up on Dungeons and Dragons, and I love Dungeons and Dragons. And I'm actually curious about Pathfinder Two E, but um, they're just different. They just feel different. Like if you're playing the James Bond game that came out back in the day, it's it's different, right? It's, it's a different ambiance. I think that's one reason why I used to like um, Ravenloft. Maybe I just like darker, broodier games. But I like period games too. I'm kind of a bit of a sucker for a period game, you know. Uh, Call of Cthulhu is not... You don't have to do that. You don't have to do the 1920s. You don't have to do Skylight. Um, I've, I've done Cthulhu Invictus back over in Rome, right? And you can do modern. You can do futuristic. You can do anything. I think I, I think I like bouncing through the time zone a little bit. Not a fan of what? Who's not a fan of what? What's what? The reason why I go T O T M. Um, Mr. Valor, I'm not understanding some of your abbreviations. My apologies. Oh, wait a minute. Re the, uh, uh, there's a reason why Third of Mine got so good uh, name recognition. I will say this. I will say this, guys. I mean, I went to ReaperCon recently, and Joseph Wolf ran 5e in a pretty wonderful, dark and twisted setting. And it was exceptional. And he did it as a true storyteller. And I actually played in two of his games because he was so good, and I would play in his games again. Joseph Wolf. So I... I I know that storytelling or the way that you GM is not reserved to system. I know that. I get that. I do. I'm just saying that Call of Cthulhu tends to change players as players. Um, I think it can change GMs too. World of Darkness. I'm not familiar with World of Darkness. a little bit longer to draw these hearts than I was expecting, but maybe I didn't really know how long it was going to take. What? World of Darkness is Vampire Masquerade. Uh, uh, werewolf. You know, so... Yeah, I don't even know if I should get into that particular topic. I, um... I've only had one game of Vampire. I actually kind of am very intrigued by it. I played the computer game. Not the same, I know. Um, I had a friend run it back in England. Long, long time ago. And I'm not particularly... 
really sure that we knew what we were meant to be doing. Like, we, we were coming straight off like a Dungeons & Dragons campaign. And we really didn't know what we were meant to be doing in this very sandbox-like environment, right? So it wasn't a particularly memorable experience. Like, I remember nothing about it. And we, that was once. Once. And I've never played it since. I would be up for it. I don't own it or anything. Okay, I got you, I got you, I got you. Well, let me throw the question back that, that Angel said to me. Uh, I'm going to say to you, what do you like about the system? We're, talk we're gamers, right? Tell me, what, what do you like about the system? Or the setting, I suppose, right? Lots of DM control mechanics in place of character development, emotional growth, permanent status effects. Leveling up was a function of role play, not killing things, although it could be. I dig that. And it, funny enough, it's a little bit ahead of its time in that respect, right? Because I think that's where a, a lot of games are trying to go. Even if it's not strictly role play that they're going towards, they're, they're trying to get away from the killing things. I don't want to get as cluttered as that. I really don't. So I think we'll just space things out a little bit. And then we're going to fill this gap a little bit. The huts might take the rest of the evening. I, th I think it's going to be that way. They're taking a little bit of time. That's okay. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I, uh, from the little that I've played of 5e, which I suppose isn't too little at this point, it, it's, I mean, I, I like it. I mean, I like it. But I can definitely see that it's it's also a good way of introducing players into role-playing in general, right? I would argue that that's one of the things that I like about Call of Cthulhu. Actually, I mean, I've had several new players very recently want to get in just because they listen to the game. Um, you certainly aren't getting new players into role play by sitting them in front of Shadowrun. I mean, that's that's literally how you turn people away, right? I love Shadowrun. I love Shadowrun, but I'm like a forty year old, uh, a forty year player, I'm, I'm, so I yeah, I can hang a little bit. I'm not getting the wife of a dear friend into a Shadowrun game. She's going to go, well, hell no.
All right, Angel. So now we're talking about this. I think I can pinpoint one of the issues regarding my fatigue. I think if I'm going to continue as a gamer, I need a system that's more loose and easy to use, but new and fresh. I'd like to check out Green Run and Age System. Maybe that's part of it. Maybe it is, Angel. Maybe it is. I will say this, Angel. Um, one of the things in our group that we um, have been trying to do recently is actually force ourselves to play new things like Earth Dawn, Deadlands. We even did a Mech Warrior game, uh, but the RP version. And I think it keeps things fresh, you know? And it's like you can always come back to Dungeons and Dragons or whatever your poison is, you know, but trying new things. We, we um, are vowed. Because the way we used to do it is, I would, let's say I would run the Masks game non stop. Three years later, we're done. So instead of doing that, I run a chapter, then someone else runs something else. It could be anything. You want to do a post apocalyptic game? You want to do a science fiction game? What rule system have you got? You want castles and crusades? Crusades? Great, let's play castles and crusades. Whatever it is. And so our group is kind of like every, every three months or so doing something new. And I think that that's a good thing. Angel says, I think part of the D&D &D and Pathfinder that I dislike is there's too much supplemental support. Yes, the splat box. Um, so, on the fortunate part of business is you need reoccurring in income, right? So that's why they all start doing splat box eventually. That's what killed it for uh, Pathfinder for me, um, to be honest with you. And I own a lot of Pathfinder. I get it. They have to release content for people to buy so they can like uh, have reoccurring income. I get it. I do. But when it becomes part of character generation, when it becomes part of you have to research so much material in order to build a character, or the GM just like, nope, just this set of books. I mean, I think it starts to become a problem when, you know, yeah. That, though, I think was part of Pathfinder's early success. I mean, not only were they clearly carrying the three, um, the edition three on, third edition on, but I said, no, it's, no, no, it's not that broken. Or was it 3.5? I forget. Um, it just needs tweaks. And I think that was genius because people weren't done yet. They, they wanted to play that right there with them. But they also came in clean. They didn't have a massive splat box and shit. Here's your player's handbook. It's your DMG. And I think that... I think people like that, you know? And now look at it. Look how many books are out there on it. Mr. Valor, I'm a completionist. I like doing something until I'm intimate with it. Like I said, I've had werewolf for 10 plus years. Yeah, nothing wrong with that, man. Um... Five E has very few official supplements, and honestly, I'm no expert because I think we own one book.
Mr. Ballow, in many ways, what you're describing, um, you know, is how my group back in England uh, used to run. We would, um, like, just have one rule system. Let's, let's call it second edition, right? And that was our shtick. For a while it was RuneQuest, but that was our shtick. And that's, we always came back to that. But I like introducing new rule systems into the group. I like playing other things. Like, I've tried Earth Dawn. Um, I've tried um, Deadlands, which I actually really quite like. And I like trying these other games. And if you stick with one system and you never try them, I feel like you lose out a little bit. So I, I like a little bit of diversity, even if you keep coming back like a magnet to your, your pole, you know? And for me right now, my personal poll as a GM is Call of Cthulhu. I think that looks okay, right? We'll add a few more here. Has 5e really been out for five years? Really? Wow, that time has flown. Really? Five years? Time flies, man. I've literally been playing it for like one. I think my first experience of 5e, well, I know my first experience of 5e was back at Game Hall Con last, well, this time last year. Hey, Booty Gazilla is here. Hey, Booty. I'll zoom out for you right now and you can take a look. We're drawing, Booty. Ruin buildings. It's an entire little village out here. Right. So this is where we're at. This is where we're at. It's, um... I should hit save, shouldn't I? <laughs> You know, when you start getting the ink on the paper and you start filling in those gaps, it really does start to take on a whole different feel, doesn't it? That's that's nice. I like it. This is where we're doing. And basically, we're emulating A26 there. And we've got a few more to draw. Not too many more. We've got a few more. I mean, I think our ruined huts are going to be done. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. I think.
think I'm okay with that. I've not played enough Cyberpunk. You know, back when I was in England and we had Shadow One and we had Cyberpunk, Shadow One run at uh, one. But I really want to get more into Cyberpunk. I really do. I don't think it's going to be one big giant empty wasteland. There's a lot of buildings in there. I'm just drawing the wastelands for a day outside first. You should check out Swords and Wizardry, Angel, potentially. It has that old school feel to it. Like two books. Done, you know? Maybe three with a DMG. Bodie, do you have any maps coming up where you're starting from a blank page with basically nothing? Oh, like, not even being given, like, something we're drawing from? Um, yeah. We're going to continue Locatoy at some point. And there is another project um, that I'm on board with. But that They're just waiting for me to get done with this. And then I'm going to start with that. And we're it's a blank slate. Oh, and it's actually really pretty. Because it's a total elevated city. It, a, it almost has an eastern feel to it. So a little bit sort of Japanese in the roofs and everything. But multi-tiered. Almost like an elven place. Uh, it, it look, I think it's going to be really tough to draw. Blank slate. So that that is definitely coming up. Bodhi, you should have been here a few minutes ago when Mr. Ballow was talking vampire. Well, between every start, there's always like a month of like drawing, right? This one started last week. I mean, I could start a lot of maps and then, like, not finish any of them. I could do that. But I like getting into the colouring, too. I, I like seeing shit coming alive, you know? But we do, we do have some, we have a lot of projects, honestly, we have a lot of projects and I can't draw quick enough. We got a lot of new projects. You're, you're going to be able to have plenty of fun with that.
following these is going to get interesting. That's going to get interesting. Just a little bit more on this space here. Now we should be good. We should be good. Why are you salty about it? Critical role has always been about supporting local charities and humanitarian causes. Wendy's is hardly those things. Wendy's released a a, 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 a scenario, a book, or a game, or something really. Let's get a few more done. Let's get a few more done. We'll be able to walk away from this. Yeah, I see, Angel. I saw your first link, too. Um, it's a PDF, so I didn't want to open it up on stream. Well, I'm, I'm probably not going to click on that, Mr. Fella. If it's something that brings up, like, something pretty disturbing on the stream. All right, gotcha.
Almost there. Almost there. A little bit more, just maybe maybe three or four more, and I think that this area is going to be done. Plenty of options to explore, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do a sanity check. Because there was a couple of numbers around there. We're going to decide what we're going to draw next stream. The next stream is maybe Monday. Depending how I feel. Depending how Sunday goes. Sunday is meant to be admin day. But we'll see. I might not need every Sunday for an admin day. There's meant to be something I was doing Sunday. Oh no, I'm not here. I'm going to Cthulhu. Come on, I'm going to Lovecraft first. Yes, I won't be streaming. And this takes a while, but I think kind of kind of necessary, you know. Now, if this whole map was ruins, I'd probably be crying a little bit. And there are a lot of ruins. There are a lot of ruins on the map, but they're not as dense as this area we're doing right here. I think that might do it, right? I think that area might be good. Right, we got. A, I'm going to look up A44. We're going to see what that's about. A44. All right, there it is. There, there's what we've basically got accomplished for this evening. So Jack just passed me a note. We're on the keto diet. But he didn't thaw the chicken for tonight. Sad face. So we have three choices. We order in. That could be good, right? Everyone likes ordering in. Or we do a burger. Meat's good. That's fine with keto. But on a bagel, that's not good. That's a cheat be tasty as fuck or we starve so we're ordering it or we're doing a little bit of a cheat um i don't like ordering in but i kind of wanna let's do that let's order in food so that's what we're doing order in apparently 
And, and Angel Sammy, you say don't have a food conversation, and I'm, now I'm talking about food. Accidental. Didn't mean it. Yeah, Bodhi Gazella Lovecraft Fest. They do it every year here in Portland, and they have panels. They've got Vincent Price's daughter here. They do panels. Uh, Chaosium is going to be here, and they show down at the Hollywood Theatre, which is like built in 1910 or something. They show Lovecraft films, and I'm going to see The Color of Space with Nicolas Cage, which I've heard half decent things about. So I'm actually kind of really looking forward to su uh, Sunday. It's going to be good. Yeah, we did burger on a bagel once um, because we were like out of food or something like that. Um, we got some nice burgers and we were like, but we didn't get bread. What are we going to do? We got bagels. But the cheesy bagels so it actually ended up being pretty damn good. It actually ended up being okay. So I think, I think, guys and girls, I think this is our area here, right? I think this is our, our ruins. So what was I going to lock up? I was going to lock up 44, 8.44. Burgers and English muffins, yes. I've done it. They're really good. What are your thoughts on the Dagon movie? Um... I don't think I have any thoughts on a Dagon movie because I don't think I've been following it that closely. But let's just say I'm going to watch it. I don't, I'm actually not sure I know anything about it, Angel. You literally just in, uh, introduced me to that. This is a nice picture. I I'm going through the book right now, like looking for the. Dis I like that picture. I, I kind of dig it. Yeah, I know, right? It had a very simple pleasantness to it. All right, go, Bodhi. You do your thing. Bodhi, it may not be here by the time you get back, in which case it was also hanging out with you. I'm just basically checking out one area and then we're going to be done for the evening. See you next time. Strange Case of Charles Dexter Ward is a resurrected movie. So I got, I'm flipping through the PDF and I noticed this. I'm like, huh. I think that's going to be one of the locations we draw. So we're going to draw it. We're going to match it on the map. Because that's what we do. Area 44. It takes me a long time to get to Area 44. Hey, he was on quick. You don't know what location it's at. There we go. Area 44. Western Gate. Meticulously constructed roadway is paved with fine, smooth square blocks. So we're going to use our flagstone fill. Hello. Um, a pale stone. Yeah, okay. Pale grey stone. We're definitely going to be doing our fill on that. As you gaze down the road, your eyes wander to the massive portal... Up ahead, the twin bronze gates have been twisted and shattered by a powerful force. The damage appears to be uh, from recent assaults on the city. All right, well, I don't think we actually have to draw anything there. The wall's not ruined or anything there. So, yeah, I think... I think that's it. I think that's it. Well, you know what? Let, let's quickly look to where we're going to go next. We're going to come up to A24, 23, and 41. 41 is a breach in the wall. All right. So that's easy. So we're going to... We'll, we'll smash the wall down. 23...
It's like Angel, I could mess with it. I go, whoa. Yeah, spiders. Um, area 23. Here we go. Area 23. Drainage from the city. A large culvert pierces the ground near the city wall. Doing sewage in a large canal. Okay, so we're going to colour that like sewage. We'll draw some poo in it. Oh, Angel, I did do a pond. I'm going to do a pond before we finish tonight. And then 41, I bet... Well, 41 was the breach. 24. Pool at bend in the canal. Okay. Turns into a sluggish stream. The banks are not lined with stone as they are further up towards the city. There's a colouring thing. And the bend in the stream has formed a brackish pool. Oh, that's going to be fun to call, uh, colour. Alright. 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 Let's, let's pick a place for a pool. Let's turn off this. I'm kind of leaning towards... Oops. Kind of here. Kind of leaning towards that. Yeah. Let's add a water feature right here. We'll colour that and add some details around it later on. But pool. <laughs> All right. So this is a good time. This is a good time to end it. This, this is where we're at. I actually don't think we have much drawing to do in the locations just up the top here, like 41, 23, 24. That's going to be easy. So I think when we next join this map, I think we're going to hit up A19 and 20. I think we're going to do those. And we're going to continue our exploration around the outside of Gaxwar City here. So we've got the southeast pretty much done, right? It looks good. I love I love when a map fills up with black. You know, we're going to just start curling our way around, and there's kind of stuff all around. You can see up here, this stuff, here, this stuff, here, this stuff. I don't know what they are. We'll find out together. Then, of course, we've got down here A33, 34, 35, and 32. We've got the big tannery down there. We're going to finish all of this outside before we go into Gaxmore City. That's why this is going to be two or three months of a project. But I think it's looking good. I think it's looking pretty darn good. This is where we're going to end it. Um, so tonight, we drew the, dru uh, the ruins. We're going to head on north. Now... Next stream, won't be tomorrow because that's whiskey and paint, painting miniatures, and I don't have a setup for that yet. Saturday, I'm playing uh, Call of Cthulhu, and I don't have a setup for streaming that either. My apologies. One day, I will change that. And Sunday is Lovecraft Fest, so no stream then. So the next time I stream is actually going to be Monday night. Okay, so it's a short ways off. My apologies to everyone. It's just the way this weekend falls. So Monday, we're going to pick it back up again. And we're going to keep hacking away. I think we're just going to keep with, with Gaxmore. I think we might do Gaxmore and do the colouring on Keystone Reforged. I think we're going to alternate them like this. And Keystone Reforged is a great one to watch too. I have a lot of fun with that. So until then, if I don't talk to you online, have an awesome weekend. And I'll see you on the other side. Thanks for hanging out with me. Every single one of you are awesome. It's been a great stream. 
What a great Friday Eve. I love you all. I'll see you online or around somewhere, right? Love you.